We now return to the culture with your host, Mr. Irrelevant, Seven, Mitchell. There's an elephant in the room when it comes to Dot Mob, if you ask me, and we're going to get into that a little bit later on in the show because there's some things that I've been peeping on the outside looking in, just as from a fan standpoint, that I, I see some potential problems in the future um, going on within the camp. Like, I feel like, yo, they definitely is a, is a dynasty. Like, I don't know too many groups that have maybe done more or is more pop or more bigger in this shit maybe outside of Team Homie, then Dot Mob. A dynasty by definition is a sequence of rulers from the same family. Yeah, that's not the way that I see it. Now, with regards to Mook, he is to be respected. He is a vet. But to me, by way of time served, not by way of active battling. To me, it's about active battling. Is Mook not a legend to you? Mook is a legend with regards to time served, not active battle. So you, so you got the legend in battle rap who's been doing this from the start, even before you are out. Mm-hmm. How many times a year do you feel like a nigga should have to battle then? I'll say four times. But uh, against what type of competition? Like, what's the chances of him being able to get... Hollow, Clips, Lux, all in one year. I mean, who, I mean, do you do you think that's going to be possible, to, especially with the numbers that these niggas getting? Because, yo, he's, he would over, definitely over-exaggerate himself battling four or five times a year, and then you putting him up against two PG niggas per year and shit like that. Like, you don't want to see Mook get mixed up into that. I don't see how this is debatable with that part. Like, to me, Mook is definitely a legend and if we asking a yeah, nigga to definitely. battle more we are asking a nigga to compromise everything that he is pretty much built i don't want the nigga to battle once a year but you know it's easy to say charlie clips head ice uh, those names if those names come quick that's three four names but after the first four then what you know what i'm saying and it's just like okay if and then we asking a nigga to battle Three, four times a year, we basically saying we only see, want to see Mook for one more year, and that's it. And I don't think Smack and can Mook. afford to pay that nigga a hundred thousand dollars for four times. Nah, nah, definitely not. Would you call the addition of Tay Rock the best move that they ever made? I would say yes, because he's a you know he's a young gunner, you know he doing his thing, um, you know he got those bars, got them gun bars. I think that was a good addition, uh, all good addition all around, especially being a, a younger brother because he could uh, carry that on if need be. Yo, J.O., when it comes to the dot mob, especially with you are elevates, how, how, how important do you feel like the dot mob name is important? to you are elements because like some of madness known they always on the card so you know how important do you feel or how relevant do you feel like regardless of wins or losses the dot mob period has to be on that big yeah. on that main i don't think they that relevant to me to be honest with you i mean to me only tay rock is the only one in url that they gotta have on this card the rest is just Rex, you don't need Rex, they recall. You need Rock. So overall, so you, need Robert, you, nah. we need Rex, you don't think we need Rex on the on the all smack main stages? Man. For what? Yo, Rex, you see what he did with T-Top? Yeah, but, I mean, it took him 10 tries. Still there. <laughs> we, <laughs> a lot of fellas. I mean, he's batting 200 right now. One other thing that we know about Dot Mobs, or at least back in the day, when them niggas battled, them niggas was always, you know, right next to each other, cheering each other on, shit like that. We never really see the Dot Mob ever had a real deal battle, you know, or or never really behind daylight. You know, they really was really behind Tay Rock, you know, and Tay Rock had hella battles where, the, you know, the Dots might not have really been on stage versus as many times as we might have seen K-Shine next to Rex or vice versa. 
you know, back in the day. So I never really, at first I took the daylight shit serious with him being part of Dot Mob. I ain't really take the real deal shit serious. Well, the flip side of this whole show, yo, that I really wanted to do this on, this is really the B side right now that I'm, this is the real reason why I wanted to do the show, yo, because I'm starting to see some type of dissension going down in the Dot Mob. Now, we, we remember there used to always be some shit about the subliminals that Rex might throw at. People used to say Rex would throw little shots at Mook or, you know, some of the shit he was saying was geared towards Mook and some of his battles. So people used to try to gas that up. Um, I'm starting to feel like that type of energy is spinning its way around again. But this time with K-Shine and Tay Rock, and even T-Rex for that matter. This whole triangle is kind of shaky to me. And it's weird because I was telling Jeff, regardless of when T-Rock start fucking with the dot mob, I said, no matter who he beat, I felt like you would never be able to overstay and shine Rex and Moot. I felt like T-Rock was always going to be fourth. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to that ladder. But now, with K-Shine fucking with DNA, Shit is looking real different now because I'm not sure if Rex is really approving of that. And clearly, Tay Rock is not really approving that shit because he done made it public. Um, and we see the two-on-two -two battle drop with uh, K-Shine and DNA. They mentioned Tay Rock and Sue Surf name a couple times. So I'm starting yeah. to see some kind of dissension in this shit. That on Tay Rock and Sue Surf joining together for that two-on-two? -two? Is that real, or is that just a rumor? I mean, they talked about it. Had, it was called gun titles, but, I mean, the biggest question is, is where this where is this two-on-two -two concept going? Is this shit getting played out? Because that's another thing um, that I was talking about as far as dissension with Dot Mob, because if you also look at it, check out the last battle that DNA and Keisha had, the last two battles. It seemed like, to me, DNA is getting a little bit frustrated with k shots performance on these two on twos because when it comes to the bars, the wordplay part, it's like he got to carry a lot of the battle. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know if DNA is kind of getting frustrated and fed up with this whole two on two shit because if it's running its course with DNA and then that shit is over and if the dots got a problem with the nigga fucking with DNA in the first place, where does that leave k -Shine? I thought this shit really revamped his career, but I don't know how long the niggas can do this two-on-two -two shit. I don't know how long the people gonna want to see it. You know, the shit with Chess and Stains was fire, but it was a little bit too sloppy. So do you consider k Shine more NWX or Dot Mob nowadays? I consider k Shine Dot Mob. I mean, he's both right now, and that's, going, and that's a problem. That's really why I did this show, because I feel like, yo, k Shine is about to on the outside end or something. I feel like K-Rock and T-Rex is not feeling this whole situation, especially with him fucking with a Queens nigga, a nigga that, you know, they don't hate DNA, but they just don't fuck with it. And now it's like, you know, this NWX shit, it really helped this nigga k Shine career. Yo shit was kind of shaky right before this shit really kicked off. Like, he had the good performance, the professor shit, but other than that, Niggas was really feeling like, you know, K-Shine was damn near done, so this shit really helped him. This nigga able to get checks. And me and Jeff were talking yesterday, I to keep it real, and I could be wrong, my niggas, but in my opinion, I think this NWX shit that took K-Shine places that Dot Mob never took this nigga. I mean, it's, That's you know, it's called Jig geographical so it's just like yo you put the nigga in the space to, to be mad at the nigga if he making moves so uh, on, are you hating on the nigga because he able to make moves and it doesn't have to you know understand the other dot mob but then if DNA is doing more of the job doing the bars and the wordplay and if he getting frustrated with how k shot is conducting shit and he want to get move away then where the fuck does that mean k shot I think K. Sean can stand on his own. I, 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 I honestly think that he could just rip his own brand and move on on the solo tip. I really think so. I don't know if today's Battle Rap fans will will cater to K. Sean getting dropped by Dot Mob, having DNA walk away from him, 
and him, you know, just do his own little zip him up shit. I, I think the, today's battle rap fan will look at that nigga more or less as being a a nigga that don't nobody want to fuck with versus a nigga that's doing his own thing. I mean, he just 3-0 verb on the solo tip, so. Shit. He just, he just killed those. But, but, I don't, I but think we don't talk about him. We ain't talking about that because, like, that shit gets these, these two-on-twos over excess you know it kind of overrides those individual wins i don't think i mean if him and dna break up that basically mean nwx broke up and i don't see that happening so but if that did happen hypothetically k shine is too creative he's too great on that stage to just be left out to dry again i agree i agree what you're saying because I'm not taking nothing away from his skill set. But with today's battle rap community, with the fans, with the sh- with the, the machine that seems to keep shit going right now, them niggas is going to look at him as a nigga that got dry, like a joke. The only thing that would help that nigga, if all this shit was to go down, he would have to battle rex. He would have to battle rex. That's that's it. That's the only thing that will save that nigga. That's it. He, he wins. If he if he if the dots get rid of the dots move away from yo and if DNA, you know, wanna move away from this two on two shit and, and that leaves K Shine to kinda be independent. Even a Tay Rock bat a Tay Rock battle might do a little something, but for him to really, you know, Rex, and I don't know if Rex will give him that shot. There's no tension with that. I can see him battling Rock before I can see him battling, battling Rex. And get a bat hit. Shit. Tay Rock a battle. But Tay Rock already said he went here battle. He don't want that shit. So he, he'll definitely get the battle sign from Rock first. You know, them niggas ain't as, them niggas ain't as close as, as, Rex, as Rex and K-Shine. And even today's battle rap fan know that. I mean, you know, we know. Why do you think that? You think it's something deeper behind the scenes, or you just think it's just the the whole? I know it is. I know it is because, I like I said, when he said a Tay Rock, I, his point was valid. But I was just thinking to myself. I said, "Damn, why did he say a Tay Rock?" Like generalizing that man, like he not part of his crew. And I'm like, there was hella other rappers that get money. I mean, that's come from outside of New York that get love and support. Like he could have used somebody else. So it was kind of weird to me. Then I remember that um, um, Tay Rock and Case. I mean, Sue Surf had that little gun title shit. So, you know, I was thinking to myself, I said, well, maybe k was kind of, in a way, responding to that. And then that's when I brought it to your attention. You was like, you know, nah, he was just trying to explain the bridge, da-da-da. I'm like, I get that. I said, but it was just the way, you know, if we from the streets, it's, it's not what you say, it's how you say shit. And sure enough, 24 to 48 hours, Rock picked up on that shit and went in on 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 K Shine on this shit. And then we seen the the, the interview that Rock had on I think it was Con Artist him and Rex. You know, he, he he ain't bite his tongue at all when they came to talk about how he'll fuck K Shine up again. You know, and he ain't fuck he ain't fuck, they not really feeling that shit. You know? And we don't see K we don't see Rock we don't see Rex and Shine at, at each other battles no more. We don't see that get that nigga Rex no more. Like, I don't think niggas is really realizing what we missing because of all the new shit that's going on. But the essence of what was going on with that camp, it ain't the same no more. And them niggas don't fuck with DNA like that. You know Rex don't fuck with DNA like that. So this nigga K-Shine, who was son, he traveling international doing things. He got a new buzz and it's not Dot Ma related. Them niggas might feel some type of way about that.